ಚಾಲಕ ಕಪ್ ನಮ್ದೆ Yeah. Ashri, thank you for uh, you know no, being on the thank podcast. Thank you for calling me. Yeah, and see, and immediately went off with your right hand. <laughs> see, the natural Shit. instincts, instincts kicked I'm in. I'm a right you know? hander. You're a right hand drinker. <laughs> yeah, I guess we all are. I think if you're a right hander, you drink with your right hand. Right no. Hand. So anyway, sorry, you'll have to adjust for the duration I'll of this up. podcast. You'll have to curb your natural instinct to pick I'm it up with your. Lefty yeah, you're going to be a lefty now. Be sorry. Be in character. Sorry. <laughs> yeah that's your character yeah but anyway cheers I'm thank you so much for making yes. it uh good to see you good to see you and the dogs and the house and bhavish yeah and yeah here. yeah yeah um yes. i thought of, i don't know why when i was thinking of guests to invite i just always think of um people with whom i think i can have a potentially maybe interesting conversation you know so just going through my list of names that i thought i could uh call and have maybe a decent chat and your name popped up and i yeah so when i called you on here yeah i just know of you as a young actor like mm. right and from what i know now you're a full time actor yes right yes. and i was like wow that's that's quite crazy man yeah, you know that's a crazy thing to do quite crazy so i thought uh, yeah if i just get you on the show and just figure out what who you are and what's happening with you talk about my struggles and no like i'll talk about the fun talk about your also. life as yeah. in uh, you know cuz i think uh, you you are the uh, first theater actor on the show yeah, yeah. oh yeah. great right? okay so uh, the mm-hmm. objective uh, that i have uh, for this why mm-hmm. why i do this thing is uh, to just meet uh, different people from different walks of life uh, interesting people from different walks of life and yeah. i mean the onus is not really on interesting because at some level everyone is interesting uh, people who are able to i think uh, express you know people who want to have a chat like not yeah. everybody wants to yeah. have a chat yeah. right some people want to have who a want chat want to share who want to share right yeah. who are keen on sharing or who are comfortable sharing so i just call people from all walks of life so that uh, uh, I'll get to know people better and mm-hmm. if you are a listener if you are if you've been following up on the show um then you get perspectives on things from you know people from different yeah. walks of life which you otherwise may not get right, right. Yeah. um so I'll get to know maybe hopefully at the end of it a little bit about the life of someone who's a full time yes. theater actor in Bangalore <laughs> and maybe and I'm sure some of the things you're going to share uh, will be interesting because it's an interesting yes. city and what you're doing is an interesting yeah. thing you know so, so it is an interesting city that Yeah I'm realizing slowly I think how interesting the city is You're yeah. Harshini Boyala which is yes. Andhra Yeah okay but I you are from Bangalore no outside of Bangalore So I am a Telgaite and but I'm born and brought up in Bangalore Oh you're a Bangalore girl proper yeah, born so brought up Yeah I'm a proper Bangalore girl yeah, yeah. doing Bangalore things been in Bangalore and I think planning to be in Bangalore for a bit Yeah <laughs> The city is like super fun so far but I also like I'm I'm slowly like trying to like travel now Okay. Be in different places and and do different things. Right. Because I've, because I think I'm born and brought up here, so I, I have like this. I don't know. Like I'm yeah, just to like, find out what's outside. Yeah, of what's outside this world, yeah, right? Because your doing. entire world is possibly S- yeah, it's Bangalore. been this and especially this area, Andhra Nagar. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's been around this. Where do you live? So Marthali Bridge. Marthali. Okay, that's yes. not 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 too far. Yeah, not from too far here. from here. Yeah. It's not too far. and you've always lived there or uh, always lived there pretty much uh, my dad is from the air force oh so, okay so they traveled everywhere okay and then like i have uh, i have two elder sisters and uh, when they reached bangalore i was born oh and they just and they decided <laughs> guys we'll just be in bangalore i'm like, tired of all the traveling yeah. we've been traveling too why, much why would you do that to me like i would want to travel because my sisters traveled they have friends from all over the country like it's crazy But so anyway. you're the only so wait, of all the three children yeah. the one who has not traveled is you yeah. the other two have been yeah. because they older than you they've seen a few other i mean yeah. they've lived in some other yeah. cities yeah yeah wow but then again they would have been too young to remember most of it right they just know that they've been around there are so many photographs my parents <laughs> were madly like photographing their childhood which didn't happen with mine so also i think like with third children like i'm just going to say it now that i feel like parents get tired of being parents I yeah, so. yeah. You've done it once, you've done it twice, yeah. and you're like, ah, oh, so let's get through with like, it. Yeah. You know what? Let let that person figure out. It's okay. And also, I think your siblings become more of your parents than your own parents. Yeah. Uh-huh. So that also happened. Yeah. So I've always been in Bangalore that day. <laughs> yeah. Um. But how's that experience been? Being the third child. Being the third child. 
<laughs> I think it has its own perks I would say I think I get to have a lot of uh fun being the third child also like I think you more like in in the class um let's say any any music band okay like your elder siblings are already listening to it in your house so you get exposed to it much before right. than your before the children of your generation yeah right? exactly so yeah, i'm yeah. i've always been like updated with what's right, the music right. okay You're a like ahead yeah of your i'm like yeah guys mtv yes i know about it oh. i know the shows yeah so much like so much teen stuff i didn't see it i didn't think of it that way yeah. but it's true right and that's an you, advantage yeah it is a super nice advantage like especially with things that um that you would not be able to discover by yourself at least when you are in when you're a kid like you would have taken time to discover it on yeah, your own exactly. but then someone ahead yeah. of you just opens that door yeah, for you yeah and then you listen to it like and the i and i bet that made you look very cool to your peers <laughs> right <laughs> yeah and Shit. then you also see your siblings trying and testing their life like i saw my sister pick up engineering and she's like 7 year my eldest sister is like 7 years elder to me so i was like so i saw her pick up engineering and i also saw what happened to her etc so i was like uh that option no <laughs> right <laughs> so you could do that i think like yeah. you could you could at least gauge a little yeah, bit yeah and like my second sister my parents were so keen on her being into iit and like she went for coaching they were trying for iit and then in between like a lot of like health got like fucked up and then am i allowed to say yeah yeah you can say what you want <laughs> so, yeah yeah and then her health was fucked and then like you know she had to come back and then she had to take up something else in christ and etc so science didn't work out right i was like uh that option no nice. like, you can see nice. like failures and success steps already so basically you were able to uh, learn at their expense yeah <laughs> yeah and i'm just watching That's right amazing. i'm just like hmm okay and, and also i think it helped that uh, both of them were girls you know so yeah. you had you could you know, relate is, to yeah, most of what relatability that like yeah you could even definitely. if you were a different kind of girl you could still uh, you know see that some of the things yeah. where you are uh, yeah, the things you have in common yeah. you can decide if you want that or not yeah. right because <laughs> her experience it's like i suppose someone like back in the days that's why the kings made someone else eat their food first right yeah. that person dies they don't eat the food, food. right exactly and so it worked out for you like that worked out for damn me like good that. so that's the positive a uh, positive, positive spin on being the third child what negatives i told you about that like the parents, parents are just, just like give really up on tired you, of being no? parents yeah. they're just like okay we have to like deal with our own lives <laughs> so, but that also turns out good right because i get to like maybe choose a lot more especially my my parents are super strict they've always been like this defense environment that we were brought up in like and discipline and like you know and i'm this like <laughs> i'm breaking all of that all the time yeah i wanted to say that oh, what did i want to say i mean i was i was planned for a boy so oh that's why they family. had you yes. oh my god it's so one of those is, <laughs> so well, you yeah. were supposed to be a boy yes my whole life i was told that okay cool you were supposed to be a boy and then the whole family is disappointed obviously so I your birth was a fair amount of disappointment yeah, i think in a moment already. right already and guess what my name is my name is harshini which right. means happiness <laughs> I was like, this is the most ironic thing. Oh my god! About my life, but it is. Yeah. Like I mean, I never, and I'm, I'm sure you've gotten over it. But when you think about no, it, no, I've gotten over it. It's just funny now. Yeah, but like, it's funny, right? That yeah. you are literally a disappointment, and I can get it. I get it. No, but it's they, such they a big. Ladki, there have been, and then they would have to force themselves to look at you and you know say how cute you are, and mm, so what. <laughs> So okay, three girls. Not everybody is blessed with three girls. You know, I'm yeah. sure people would have consoled your father. That would have yeah. been like, of course. <clears throat> But instead of being like, <laughs> oh my god, exactly yeah? that. I think he would have gone back <laughs> oh, and punched the wall or something, no? <laughs> right? And back in the day, you know, the best part of this is back in the day, mm. he would have blamed your your mom because we still didn't know that it's a guy that decides the right. you know sex for the child. No, I right? don't know if that happened. Uh, I'm sure. But he like could him. have if he, he yeah. had the option. Maybe the relatives did. Yeah, you know, you know what I'm saying. Maybe not my dad. Look at her giving only yeah, girls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! That But imagine been... like a whole process of giving birth. I mean, that whole step is based on a gender. Like, I can tell you oh, this. We'll have, like, They literally would have this chat. You know what? Let's try one more time. Yeah, <laughs> let's try one more time. Shy, it's a girl. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure that was oh, the conversation. Oh man! Like imagine people were willing to bet on those exactly. odds. Exactly, and one more life. Yeah, one more life. life no. Have. 
ha ah, okay no one can say we didn't try you know <laughs> yeah it's a girl it's you know but but uh, but that's the amazing thing about human nature yeah. no? that there's a generation or so many generations i think that's changed now tremendously changed. i think it's Definitely. changed tremendously i'm sure it's not 100% changed now i think people just want to have one child like people my sister has a child. son now yeah yeah and she's like I think this is the amount of energy I have yeah. for one child. Yeah. So I'm just yeah. going to invest in that yeah. one entity now. <clears throat> it's a, it's you know it's a, while I think it's sensible for the world that we live in uh, and it's a, what can I say um, economically also of course it makes a huge yeah. uh, difference but there is some But I think I would prefer like kids to have siblings because I yeah, think yeah, I know yeah, what you mean. Do you have siblings? I have two younger siblings. Yeah. Uh, both, uh, but the sisters. Sisters. And I'm much older than them. Imagine okay. my between me and my sister Shailu, who's the first after me. Mm. There's five years, and then two years okay. between her and Tanuja, who's oh, okay. So, so they're closer. Seven and five. You know, seven yeah. and five. So they're closer. But I was always the older one, and my dad. I think back the my dad. I mean, my parents come from very humble roots, so they had a tough life. You know, they, I mean, to make it like my dad. Uh, I mean, a credit to the guy that he pulled himself out of poverty, and he made sure that me, yeah. me, or my sisters yeah. did not feel the Have effects of it. Yeah. You know, uh, so he did a good job there. But as a result, I was just free labor. I was the oldest child and a boy. Okay, so I was just just free labor man, and this and the girls. were the children you know i was just free help and for that they fed me and they you know i was under the roof and and you know i was i sent to school mm. in a uniform and stuff and i get I used to get lunch and stuff like that that's that's about it you know what i'm saying they they worked very hard right mm. and they had two little kids Eight little kids to take care of i was literally just like an emigrant worker man working in their house it was like so bad i'd be like what the heck it was it was a tough 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 childhood i, was I mean i was so upset with my family for the longest time my dad yeah. especially he was a tyrant not tyrant in the sense in my time mm. i don't know about your time in my time kids were beat up by parents especially boys yeah i was okay? also beat up especially now. by uh, bo- i was beaten up like a boy Yeah, okay. Yeah. I don't know how bad your treat. Mine was like regular thrashings, okay. Um, <laughs> like, regular, because and sometimes I don't even. Looking back, I'm like, looking back, I think a lot of it was unfair. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It took me a while to uh, get over yeah, it. Definitely. I'm over it now, but for the longest time, till I was uh, in my twenties, even I would say as 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 late as my thirties, I was extremely resentful of how. I thought I was treated as a, I mean how I was treated as a child. child. I'm able to mm. rationalize it now and now I understand that it, it they must have had very difficult lives. The effect lives. of is like really long, right? It it's yeah. long lasting. Uh, yeah. I think uh, that's one of the best things that's happened to society that parents most parents at least don't hit their children. Yeah. But I have my own fears there also. I think sometimes I see a lot of parents bringing up their children so soft that they're either spoiled or become too soft. I've seen that as well, and I see a lot of guys ten years younger than me, fifteen years, who parents yeah. who dads never raised their hands on them. I don't know, maybe it's my perception. I just feel like they're very soft. Yeah. I've been beat they're up so much. Like, there's no, there is no idea of fear anymore. No, they've not been slapped. That's why they've been slapped, yeah. kicked, punched. No, <laughs> I don't know if that's yeah. the right idea of fear, but like, yeah, some ways. The thing is beyond a point. It's like this. Imagine one kid. Let's take me for example. Should I don't know why I'm talking about this. My dad ever finds out? No, he gets very upset about this yeah. when I speak about this. I hope my dad doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> But it's okay. I think it's about we're adults now. It's about time yeah. they knew, right? At least I think it's sometimes interesting to uh, to know how people feel yeah, right about yeah, things. Yeah. Yeah. Right. This I'm sure like a lot of people will feel mutual about. Yeah, like, I think I so. I think like, I, I mean yeah. I've, you're still much younger than I am, but uh, yeah, but one generation ago. Go, things, yeah. yeah. But you're also rare. Also, like because I'm the third child, Correct. like I get to experience like a parenthood of like my sister's mm-hmm, generation. Mm-hmm. Like that's seven years. Correct, correct. A lot of so, my friends have right, the right, first right. Child, so your so parents would have been a little older than the parents of a lot of your yeah, your friends, exactly. right? So yeah. you were, so you yeah, you, I do fall into that. So you fall into that last yeah. generation <laughs> that beat up their kids. So <laughs> yeah. sad, yeah. So you got that last ticket, type, <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah, that's the last. Oh, shit, ticket. If you just been born five years later or something, you know. Yeah. Uh, but, but it does make you tougher. I it, know that for a fact. Yeah, I know that for a fact. It does because it, it does. there is a certain physicality to violence. You know, you know, which you ingrain. You know, which oh you ingrain. Oh my God, that's so true. You know, yeah, you ingrain it, and when you've been whacked around a few times, you get used to it. Yeah, you know, and it does make you tough. It does build reflexes. It does like there's a part of your brain that notes it down. down. You know? Yeah, it's, it's it's right. 
So yeah, so, so many yeah, like, yeah. Like, uh, yeah. So maybe for the but I know that I'm I'm rougher and tougher than a lot of guys my age. Uh, sometimes it's uh, not very good because people feel find me intimidating or aggressive and all of that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think overall it's helped me, I suppose, because uh, it's a rough world. You know, it's a tough place. But also, I think like parents now are trying to figure out like a better way. Like, what's the balance? I don't know. Maybe I think there should be. I think there is a yeah. lot of balance now. Yeah. Just that a lot of people are also like it's not like you're hitting them at like every uh, conversation or like every time the child is saying no. You just I I hope that's not the same. But I think once in a while you should slap the kid. Just yeah. slap him. You know, like maybe not her. Her it should be the but I should be Why gender roles. Should be the guy. Should be the father hitting the son and, and the, the mother, mother hitting the, the daughter. Should never be the other way around. You know. It's always difficult the other way around. I think a mother hitting a son, I think maybe a little too much for the boy, and vice versa. You know, like yeah, a father hitting the yeah. daughter may also it be. It could be a lot. It could be too yeah, much. I don't know why. Think, Because they're differently attached. I think to both. I think there's parents. a gender role to play there. You know, and yes. you're not so offended. Also, I'm sure a girl would be more offended if a father slapped her versus the yeah. mother, right? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. So and and the other way around as well. I'm sure. Like as a guy, you don't want anyone slapping you. Your dad slapping you. Yeah. After a while, you just get used to it. Just like you know, <laughs> put up with it. Yeah, but then, uh, yeah, then there comes a time when you just say no, enough. You know, that's that uh, coming of age moment where you say enough. So you've had that conversation. Yeah, yeah. Okay. No. So I think it's more a moment. It's not. Mm-hmm. Wasn't really much of a conversation. It was more of a. <laughs> <you know? laughs> just, just that that gives. Yeah, I think <laughs> enough is enough. You no know, like that kind of a thing i think that's how it no- is probably how it happened with him as well yeah. i'm sure that was the cycle right you know it's so different so, yeah. i mean yeah. i think it's so but i think it's difficult. gotten for the better yeah. for the better definitely yeah. yeah like i'm seeing my sister being a parent now and like i know where her priorities lie and mm. how much it's mm. so different from my parents being parents so i think india has also changed right society has changed yes. i think your priorities have like changed how you look at i know like for a fact that my dad's only only to do list was okay we build a house right and that's it like once you build a house that's the dream right right, right. but like comparing it to my life or my sisters it's so different like yeah yeah you're right that whole generation i have generation. too many choices internally and externally right uh figuring out my own art what do i want to pick um so much more we're so much more exposed they had like a focused goal and they said and it we was will a house, no? house it was a house house And then daughter's marriage. Daughter's oh no. Two things, two aims in life. Daughter's marriage. And marriage I'm sure they must have said marriage. no. After the third one is married, then I can die peacefully. Yeah. You know that must be a constant in your family, right? <laughs> yeah. Just let the third one be done with. Okay. I'm sure they made. Uh, they keep. Yeah. Uh, uh, do they do? Do they say that dialogue? What is it? No. But has your second sister been married? Only your first yet. one. Okay. Okay. So yeah, you still so have one more to go. Yeah, but there's no like, pressure on you till she's married off because you can always be, just point at her, right? Yeah, yeah, that's there. So I'm just like, but pressure-wise, I'm 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 okay. I think like it's going to be my choice. I know that so many choices I think in my life have been mine. <laughs> so I think they know that even with right. marriage or even if I decide to ever not or do it, I think it will be up to. And I have a feeling that is also a benefit of a plus point of being a third child. Yeah, I think they realize. With one child, okay, <laughs> doesn't hard. want to do what we want. Okay, let's try the other one. You yeah. also don't want to do what you want. What we want, forget yeah, it. My sister was forget like it. a nice child. Like the middle she, or the older? The older one, like okay. the first child. Mm. She did everything that dad would like, and yeah, she's happy. But I was like, I will do everything that you <laughs> want me to do. Yeah, it's been crazy. I mean, with the third child also, like because I've seen them like pick what they want to do, what they were doing with their jobs, etc. I was like, okay, no, 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 that's not happening. I said, okay, I'm doing architecture. That's what I want to do because it was close to I think what I was already exploring. I guess. Okay. I used to draw, so I said, cool, I can draw. Now what? What do I do with this? But I also liked science a lot, so I said, and then I used to read up a, a lot about it, and then. architecture struck my mind so i said okay cool like it's it's something that i think i can practice for a long time and i took it up but i think even before i took it up i was like yaar actor to banna tha <laughs> <laughs> like ye to tha hi kya ho gaya but then like this whole thing that okay no i think i want to be practical about this whole decision let me just like get a dig i don't know I, it's so lame that i think i thought that way then i was like what what was lame 
then i was like oh i need a degree i think that the information is fed to you always that don't you don't you think so would would you disagree no i would disagree fully at this point i i have friends i'm seeing so many people uh leading their lives working on their art and craft and making money good money without having a degree and so i'm like why is that one paper deciding so much you know i never uh, have i haven't thought about this much but i'll tell you i went to college i did bcom okay i did 12th i did uh, science with bio and math okay like cbsc okay i wanted to be a doctor i mean my i think i wanted to be a wow. doctor because <laughs> my parents wanted to be a doctor mm-hmm. but by the time and when i passed out of 10th standard i was uh, one of the you know top uh, ranked students in my class but when i passed out of 12th i was one of the uh, top ranked from the bottom so forget uh, uh, doctor nurse is also too much even compounder would not have been possible so then <laughs> randomly i chose to do bcom Okay. I did become in a really uh, in a college in Chennai. Hmm. Uh you, you would have you would have MCC, right? Yeah. Yeah, just yeah. before that on the left there's a small <laughs> small college called Assam Memorial College of Arts and Sciences. Okay. okay. Mm. I did my become there. It wasn't much, I can tell mm. you that. Um and the degree has not really been of much use to me uh, from an educational perspective, from a career perspective. I've done nothing with a that required a become. But those three years were an interesting experience, and yeah. I think it shaped experience-wise. Yes, it shaped um, a lot of what yeah. I, I think, what I, uh, what uh, I don't know. It shaped my thinking. It shaped my attitudes. Mm. Uh, it did play a huge role in my uh, exposure to society and the world and the world to come. You know, I just think that it's n- college experience, and I think it's important for kids to go to college, even if you do diddly poo while you're in college. But I think the whole experience of college oh my god the hanging yeah. out i would the, never uh, the stress yeah. the tension the, the the romance if there is any yeah. or the or the, <laughs> or the or the fact that you're frustrated because there is no romance you know uh, whatever it may be the whole yeah. experience the jealousy the insecurity uh, the superiority complex the inferiority complex so much yeah. happens in college so right? much so oh my much. god i would never compromise that i think for yeah. sure yeah i mean no regret doing uh architecture for sure i met the people of my life there like almost like i where did you my, do architecture uh dhanan sagar dhanan sagar where is that uh, it's uh, banshankri i mean okay. the uh, the one that i did in architecture is in uh, kanapura road okay. there are two branches okay okay so yeah it was it was everything i think those five years were yeah i i really i think the people that i've met there and are still in my life and i know that they're going to be in my life for those experiences yes but when i look at now that career wise and you know like it depends like what your priorities are and stuff i i agree with it i'm like if i knew earlier like i could have started something much what what are you earlier. talking what did you what did you wish you had known earlier what do you wish you had known earlier uh, i'm just trying to that, understand huh i'm just trying to understand yeah yeah, yeah i'm not i'm not trying to put you on a spot i'm not asking <laughs> you a tough question like aha no it's nothing to do with that tough question guys. i just yeah <laughs> I just want to understand what it is that you wish you'd known that you would have done differently. You know? Yeah, I think um, if I knew that acting is something that I uh, consciously want to practice as as an art form, as a craft, I want to get better at it. I think I should have also like the place that I was in. I think college is its own bubble. Like it's unless. I think I I've heard some college experiences that are very different from mine but like I think mine was sort of a bubble like you would not exactly know also it was in Kanakpura road we used to live in Kanakpura and like everything was happening in and around so 5 years just I, I definitely had fun like no regrets but I'm just But like, you somehow I I think you feel those 5 years have just been held you back by a couple of years Yeah Right, like Just you wish you, maybe if it yeah. hadn't been was was it a five year course? Yes, it was I think if it had been a three year course, you would not have regretted yeah. it so much. You know, because yeah. again for me, my BCom was three years, and then I said I'm not going to study in my life again. Yeah, ever. and then you're out. Out, right? out, but out. Sure, it was a bit. Oh, but yeah, of course, yeah. I had ambitions of doing MBA and all that. Yeah, you Luckily, did. Luckily, my final year, I failed one paper, <laughs> so I had to write that arrear. You know, I could no. I would, I would yeah. join MBA somewhere and wasted more of my father's money, which he would have made me realize and told me to my face again and again and got me more pissed off than I already <laughs> was. Uh, yeah. So, but then because I failed a paper, mm. uh, I already started working. I started working three weeks after college because I didn't want to be in the house, right? So then I after after I got a taste of the real world, 
next year when i could apply to an mba i said i'm not studying again i'm not i'm not going to educate myself through books again i'm done with it and wow. uh, and i haven't studied after that and it in a way it is it, it is a stupid decision to uh, leave your leave your education incomplete but our line of work which is the uh, um what can i say the entertainment no no what do i say how do i describe what we do it is entertainment it is entertainment right it film entertainment. film it's film. It's, it's more yeah. film for me yeah. it's more film it, i mean i also believe in other aspects of entertainment but my focus is on film making yeah uh, as 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 an art form right um yeah but sometimes it doesn't work out okay and what do you do as in how do i explain this i got a little lucky that though i did not educate myself well i got mm. into advertising and i think i think the series of events that happened right mm. helped me educate myself yeah. about certain things about as- aspects of life and therefore maybe that's why i've not flourished as an artist uh, yet because i just say that well uh, i'm i'm just beginning to make my mark now and i'm already in my early 40s you know what i'm saying i could have probably done this earlier but then i've spent that time fulfilling commitments and learning how to be a man of the world how to make money how to make it how to solve real world problems you know things that most artists don't know things that most actors don't would you know. do it any other way now now that you're in no no now that i know now that i've been through this i wouldn't do it any other way but uh, um it's the long way around you know what i'm saying like i could have wherever i'm going to in a couple of years wherever that may be i probably could have gotten there a little earlier but the few excess years now in hindsight i'm grateful for right because yeah. uh it <laughs> put me in a yeah. place of a little more confidence mm-hmm. i have a little more confidence with that i understand how the world works i have hope that i'll be able to circumnavigate things that come my way yeah. you know uh i think i understand people better i think i understand yes. situations better and i think i'm clearer about what i want to what? do mm. and more importantly that's how to get there that's the most important thing right you know how to get yeah, there I, i mean i still haven't gotten there that's why i'm saying i haven't flourished yet it's only when you get there that you can say okay you know okay what next you know you, but i think i'm still there just a couple of steps more but i'm almost what there what is there there is uh, having uh, more choices where you have the choice to do what you want to do it's not about what other people want you to do you know what mm-hmm. i'm saying there as an artist or as a person i'm saying as mm-hmm. an individual you know you've uh, achieved freedom in life when mm-hmm. you're only doing things that you want to do okay. right of mm-hmm. course there will be pressure right whatever it is that you want to do you still have to uh, but it's make- your own thing that you're doing you are and making you ends meet and uh, you're making ends meet comfortably doing the things that you choose to do right. you know purely because you like them mm. there will be pressure there will be inconveniences nothing is ideal and there will be sometimes you have to work with people that you may or may not like so much right there will be times um, even if it's something you want to do there will be times when you encounter individuals who you wish you didn't have to work with <laughs> but that's there'll be other smaller problems mm. i mean there'll be first world problems mm. you know there'll be other people who are not able to make ends meet the other people who are uh, doing something where they're making a lot of money but they are uncomfortable or miserable every uh, moment that they are involved in that thing right so to yeah. me there is uh, i'm already doing things that i enjoy to an extent but i do a lot of things that i don't necessarily enjoy uh, yeah. for money you know right. and it's good money and i'm grateful for it i'm privileged for the fact that i have those skill sets right that yeah. i can make that so money you can make right that money. yeah so i'm very grateful uh but i'd rather uh but i'd work towards i rather work towards being purely involved in uh in film to start mm-hmm. with and uh other things that interest me that i some of some of which i can't do right now because i can either either i can't i can't afford to financially or i cannot afford to from the perspective of time right which is many of the same thing actually time is money you know right. uh, time is yeah. money the question is how much do you value your time Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I only asked you what is there. I mean, what what do you mean by there is because I've heard so many perspectives about for so like for different artists. Like you keep saying it, right? Even especially as an actor, like you're like always like I didn't make it yet. And like I'm going to make it. I'm looking forward to make it. So this sentence has been always like I've been thinking about it a lot. I lately. think you should. I think yeah. you know, I I what is there like when will i finally say that yes i'm here now i'll play my game or oh, like when is that 
moment i guess I according to you i'll tell you my I'm perspective <laughs> after i get your perspective okay because i think mine will be a slightly different perspective because mm. i don't see my i'm not an actor i'm primarily a director i can also act as you would know because we work no, together you've been my co-actor yeah yes. right so <laughs> i can act but i'm mostly a director mm. right though i wanted to be like you and millions of other young people i wanted to be an actor when i was young but uh, i'm glad that uh, that moved into you know direction right so i meet a lot of young actors you know and actors are always you know you know mostly you know in a place of frustration you know and yeah, uh, uh, yeah. and most actors are strugglers that's the fact of how that industry works they're most, almost synonyms now right <laughs> yeah actor yeah, and the, struggle but i don't know i have certain perspectives on that which i will come to but i before i come to that mm. what is your idea of there what's your what's what's what is it that you want <laughs> what's your idea of you what know this is what i want to ask you whatever i mean as long as you're comfortable and as long as uh, uh, i'll down it for this <laughs> 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 hmm. um like what do you expect as a, okay just so that the uh, yeah. viewing audience all 25 of them understand better you are today a full time actor Right, yes. and what's amazing, what I what I find interesting about you, and that's one of the reasons that I called you here is, you're a theater actor. Mm. Right, theater is what you do most of your time. Yes. Right, and before this, you were uh, working. Yes. And now you've given up your job as well. You were an archi- yes. you're working in an architect's firm. Yeah, uh, it was a design studio. You were working in a design studio, uh, and now you've even quit that. Yeah. Right? And you're focusing full time on acting, and most of your acting is in theater. right now yes yeah <laughs> how how uh, and why how did you get here and what makes yeah. you do what you do and third very casually where is in there? your own pace yeah where is there what is yeah. it you are working towards okay ta-da <laughs> <laughs> i know you let it that out <laughs> <laughs> no no i i try not to i try to keep yeah. keep it real <laughs> I think I think it's fun when people get to see also uh, yeah. you know <laughs> a natural exchange. Very well, like I said, uh, I'm not trying to put you on the spot. No, no, I actually yeah. want to know because I'm, I'm quite curious. Fun. I'm quite curious. I think it's amazing. Okay, let me. Since anyway, you're not. Yeah. yeah. You, you still haven't I'm, started. I'm, I'm going, I'm going to, to speak start. some more. Yes. I think it's fascinating that you're a theater actor in a city like Bangalore because I don't think theater is rocking in Bangalore. Hmm. I don't think theater is kicking it at the moment. I grew yeah. up in Chennai, which at least when I was young was uh, yeah, was big on theater. as mm-hmm. even english theater i'm talking about yes. mainly english theater because that's what i was uh, that i saw right uh, there was a lot of support and mm-hmm. most uh, english plays or whatever it is and most of it would would run packed it's not like the people in theater were making lots of money that's not mm-hmm. the case that's never the case but there was a lot of uh, patronage yeah there was a lot there was a community around theater and whenever it's you put huge. up a show yeah. there's a huge uh, crowd that lands up Hmm. Uh, and you have a huge fraternity and you know theater was i don't know how it is today in chennai i must be honest but in my time till 15 years ago when i was there it was cool to be in theater and if a theater actor you know you uh, and also i was young so maybe that's mm. how that's what that's the aspect of theater that yeah. i saw people knew you and you kind of cool you know and it was cool to be an actor and hmm. you know to be featured <laughs> in a production and yeah. you can, if guys can get chicks a lot easier and stuff <laughs> okay. uh, yeah but so it was cool you know but that's not the why i'm getting off theater in bangalore today right now mm. not that i'm involved much in theater so i shouldn't comment but that's been my observation that it's right. not rocking in bangalore mm. is that true or false i would say it's true uh so far like again like this is such a difficult question for me because i've just started theater okay so it's been exactly a year my first play ever was this year jan but I, i don't know why it just feels like i've been here forever that was your first play the one i saw you yes. in uh, smut uh, thief cactus goat smut yes thief thief cactus goat smut that was your first play yes. oh yes. that's where i saw you that's yes. where i spotted you and i asked yes. you if you be part that's of yeah. that's how yeah. we met that's how we met yeah so so that way i feel like whatever i say will just be a very i think a very small perspective uh, i don't know no, no i just very, let's let's talk from don't worry about it talk from the perspective of your experience yeah my experience whether it's true or false just started yeah. somebody theater. who just theater so what's been your experience don't so worry I about started, anything i else. decided to do theater during covid which was not a good idea i mean not not idea but uh, i think 
factors wise it didn't really work out because nobody was not there. the right time to be yeah. getting into theater not the right it's time it's like getting into the airlines business <laughs> in april 2020 yeah you know, like, yeah. like yeah. starting a travel agency yeah. papa mai travel agency shuru karungi and then you start and then exactly yeah. right so i think when i thought about it uh, covid hit and i think i was just like why is everything so cold but the whole world was like going through a lot so i was like okay i'll figure it out but that also became a period of time where i was genuinely trying to figure out what i should be doing and uh, i think i was just like okay i know i want to act and i want to definitely try let me fail or succeed let's see but i think uh, it's worth a trial so that's something that i i just just decided stupid question Monday. why did you want to act Sir, i know it's very silly but um I think it's always been there uh, as a child while growing up. It's just been there that it's feeling that you there. must be an actor. Yeah. Yeah. Also I I was learning Bharatanatyam and so I was close to stage uh since since my school Early days, days. formative years. Yeah. So I've always been used to performing and that and when you finish a performance and like when it, it's I think it's a beautiful feeling. I I can't ever equal that way. I can't ever describe it in any other way. But don't I you think, think it's also kind of vain? I'm not disagreeing with you. I have these same feelings. I've had these same feelings when I was young, right? Yeah. I I've, I've also <laughs> uh before I decided to get mainly into direction for a, mm. for a short span in my life I really harbored this idea of being an actor. I toyed with it and luckily I'm so glad looking back on my younger self. <laughs> I'm so glad I chose not to delve into it with all my heart and mind. With mm. that is my only goal. I'm glad. I'm You're glad I, I cuz I don't know I don't know I You're scaring know. me but yeah No 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 <laughs> that's me and I had yeah. my reasons for it right. I okay. had my reasons for and I think being male was one of it being the first child was one of it right. lots of factors having to for prove it. yeah a lot of things that I had to prove and I knew the last thing I wanted to be was to be 28 29 and still seem like a loser to my my father You get it I had I think because of a result of the conflict me and right. my father had when I got out when I got to become an adult at 20 right I had only one goal in life to prove that I'm not a nobody to prove that I'm not a loser to prove that uh I am capable of taking care of myself you know to prove that um and I think because my parents come from very humble roots right I wanted to be as far from poverty as I can I wanted to make money I wanted to have money right um and so I had I didn't I did I the idea of just roaming around trying to be an actor was not an option i knew that i had to make money that's how yeah, i joined, joined i think it's a privilege for me i yeah. consider it as a privilege for me that i'm able to do it uh because there are some things that are i'm able to take the chance i think i'm in a place where i'm able to take the chance same reasons i think i'm not the first child um parents have a house i do have shelter there is not particular rent for me to pay and even if i have to i will be able to figure it out because i did architecture because i'll be able to like, get some design gigs and get some money to like somehow figure out some things and there is no pressure right now on me at least i'm not taking it i think i've just decided that i'm not going to take this uh, pressure of like okay well, what are you your uh, <laughs> i just turned 25 like few days ago oh many happy returns <laughs> happy birthday when was this It was uh, not few days ago. Fuck! Why am I saying that? It was a never ago. Twenty ninth. No, that's okay. It's It was a good. month ago. No, but twenty ninth. Yes. Happy When birthday, anyways. Birthday? Mine is September. Oh. September. Mid mid September. So, so anyway, you got that many, wrong. Many many happy returns. Which one? The oh, that yeah yeah September mid September. The cigars, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry, you were saying. Yeah. So I think I I do feel privileged. You just turned twenty five. Yes. Right. Yes, huh. I did. and um i began theater when i i just turned 24 again so and you worked for how long i worked for a year and a half oh so you college uh, yeah okay it would yeah, have taken 5 years because right? it's 5 years 5 years but my 5th year was also working I, mean, okay. i used to work with total environment and then we used to yeah it was fun but then i realized that uh, i'm slowly trying to like i was like okay 9 to 5 this whole structure that i'm supposed to work on a couple of hours was i think getting to me not because like i mean i'm jealous of people who can do it honestly like i have friends who are kicking ass with that whole schedule and they have like so much money they have like a great schedule like throughout the week and they have great weekends i'm just really jealous of them it's just that i 
person i couldn't i just couldn't like some days i was really low and i said i don't feel creative today like what about it like, like how do i figure this out then i realized that i'm somebody who wants to maybe do something by my own but before which i was like okay this whole acting thing or like this this love for camera this love for like performing yeah like performing being uh, saying the story but being somebody else it was so i think it was it, so it dreamy. can be it can be uh, um it, it's a high it's a rush it's, it's a, a rush. big high it's, a rush. it's it's a, yeah. yeah it's and i was like okay i've acted in one proper play just one i've acted in uh, one other very bad play and one <laughs> one reading i was a part of just terrible mm. but one play and i was also part of a pantomime which was fun but uh, mm. i had to i had to wear fake breasts and a big bum and shit i don't enjoy and i had to dance and sing in a female voice and it was it's an experience <laughs> but it's ugh, as 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 fun. a Sounds as a guy fun. always trying to be more and more manly because i think mm. i'm not manly enough sometimes I got those memories I'm trying to erase from my head. Like, yeah, how could I do that? Why would I cross the best? But of course, the 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 the, the reason the director chose me, she said, no, no, it's always the best actor who's that. I mean, it's the, that that character is called. It's traditionally the pantomime. Okay. Uh, mm. uh, the men play the female, female parts because yeah. pantomime began during the Anglo-Saxon wars, right? Mm. And the purpose of the pantomime was to entertain the soldiers. Oh. Okay. And you cannot have women around soldiers, you know. Even so back then, the even the guys was. who dressed up as women on stage had problems. <laughs> you know, that's how horny those soldiers were. You know what I'm saying? So traditionally, that main female character is played by a man, and apparently it goes to the best actor. And apparently, so it, I should feel uh, I was supposed to feel uh, nice, yeah, uh, <laughs> proud of the fact that I was chosen. I said I don't want to dress like a chick. <laughs> I'm not that driven by the artistic values of theatre. but uh, but then i was a guy and i didn't want to you know be like a wuss saying no i won't play it as it yeah fine i'll play it but it, that's what i think as actors we enjoy that like no i enjoy everything else i just yeah. i i, I, <laughs> I didn't enjoy being a chick i think i have issues i just didn't enjoy i love no, no but i the did guy. the part as well as i could and i had yeah, fun yeah it was fun. an experience right? exactly. yeah it was an ex- yeah. but i think i think i have so much of a male ego i just Ugh, they had I had to wax my oh. no, arms and shit. And I was like, dude, this is really Ooh, like, okay. come on, you know. But it was an experience. It was such an, experience. an interesting thing yeah. about you. I yeah. never could have imagined. Yeah, nice. and then I did one proper play, <laughs> uh, which uh, a day before the play in Chennai. I'm from mm-hmm. Chennai. Uh, at that at the time, there was a very famous theatre director named Mitran Devanesan. He mm-hmm. was a legend of Indian theatre at that time. One of the mm-hmm. big guys in Indian theatre. so the guy directing our play satya i think his name was so he was a sort of he looked up to the so mitran mm-hmm. called him to just see the dress rehearsal and give some feedback and all of that and mitran came and he just saw the entire there and saw the entire dress rehearsal you know he chain smoker so he was smoking smoking at the end of it he just ripped it apart like very gently very soft he just ripped everything he just made us feel like <laughs> shit and it's not like anything he said was wrong but he just said this <laughs> that and out of nowhere he said and look at this guy which is me why does uh, why does he look like one of the beatles what kind of haircut is this i'm like Viral yeah, and all that, and, and the best part is it is it's a supposedly a rip roaring comedy okay like uh-huh. side splitting you know sort of a comedy he sniggered once like <laughs> once through the rehearsal no i think at one place he tried i think there was silent soft Uh, unvocal giggle and a snigger at one point you were like demoralizing that satya as it is one one morose khadus guy okay after his name satya i think satya i think satya was his name after this though he just like lost the plot mm. went to the corner smoking blabbering to himself oh, we were all like we were like okay dude three months of work down there we were all very young i was i was 23 you know and all everybody was even younger than i am And uh, <laughs> this is Alliance France H and I. That's where a performance happened. Uh, I think totally four shows, two days. I have been to that space. Dude, people loved it. It was crazy. It was crazy. <laughs> it was just crazy, so mad. Cool. Okay, like from the fifth minute, and I was supposed to enter in the so cool. tenth minute or whatever. So mm. I'm like backstage. I'm like, yeah, dude. Now then, suddenly, suddenly we're hearing laughter. Okay, after two minutes, like, ah, yeah, soft giggles. Hey, so not bad. Yeah. Somebody <laughs> giggled up and all that. <laughs> and, then, and the and the laughter kept getting stronger. Mm. You know. and i was playing one of the not the lead role uh, but it was not a play with lead roles it is more of you had significant right. characters a bunch yeah. of them and i was one of the significant characters um I, even my bit was it, it came out really well so wherever i cracked my jokes you got the ra- right nice. laughs and my scenes were well received which is what you care about yeah. right the part <laughs> like any any like any other selfish actor you want to make sure your parts and your lines 
come out okay right you know got the right response and at the end we got a standing ovation oh, very all four cool. times and so i know cool. what you're saying it's a very addictive feeling yeah. you like you feel so good about yourself your ego is like you know it fills up the stadium you know and you know imagine yourself in holdings and shit yeah yeah it's it's, yeah. A, very, it's a very misleading feeling <laughs> agreed yeah i'm slowly like now i've realized like what but that's, it's you know so what? different now but you know what i think, I think it's okay Yeah it's definitely okay but it's also slowly changing like why I've chosen this and like what I want to do and I think it's important things. I'm glad you're saying that I think yeah. it's important it to It started off there evolve from yeah. there That can be the reason you stayed but it can't be the reason you work You continue to do like how can you have the same source of like yeah so that yeah. that's been <laughs> yeah Where was I Okay yeah so I did What was, what we were, were talking about, about theater. We we're talking about why do you do theater? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How I ended up here, right? So why did you start? One more question. A lot of people want to be actors, right? And yeah. I, I'm as yeah. as an ad film maker. One of the many things I do. I'm also an ad film maker, right? I know a lot of models, young people who want to be models mm. and stuff, right? Um, but you've chosen to act in theater. How did that? Why did you even? How did theater become an option? Right. Yeah. So that uh, I think I was very sure that film is what I wanted to do. Uh, but i was just questioning a lot about modeling either like maybe i didn't get gigs or like i just ended up not doing it somehow i mean i've gotten like few gigs in the beginning right after college and stuff and i was trying this whole space out it was just not happening i don't know why like um i uh the they i don't know if the clients wanted something else was i not uh, maybe i was not able to like find the right a uh, space i was not doing it right but meanwhile i found something else which was i said okay i want to do film and i think i was so sh- i watched some films that made me feel like there are so many stories here like within my uh, surroundings and where i come from where my parents come from and there's so much to say and i was like it must be feeling so nice if i can convey that if i can be that person who brings out those stories because i'm like who else is from chitur right Actually, that's where you're from your yes. roots are from chitur tirupati okay. Okay. tirupati who else is from there uh, who else is going to tell those stories and because there are definitely lots of stories there so i came from this mindset then i was like okay that you wanted to tell stories or you want yeah. to be a part of storytelling process yeah you, you play a character these. right yeah. yeah and i play char- and i was always fascinated with the idea that i get to be so many other people i think that was I think that that always has been fascinating for me that this particular profession lets me be anybody in the world for like few seconds. I think that's always been fascinating. I don't know since a child I think I've always been thinking about that. So I was like okay, acting to karna hai. Ab kya? Like how to learn this? Do I put myself through a school? Now, I come from a schooling of 5 years of architecture. I said no, I cannot put myself through a system right now. I'm not ready for it. That's something that I was so sure that let me be my own. Like uh, I'll find teachers. I'll find multiple teachers who are actually going to teach me. Not, not that okay. I go to a place and my teacher has already decided. I don't even know if this is is this teacher going to like tell you something. So I said okay. Schooling is not happening. Film school is not happening. पैसे तो वैसे भी नहीं हैं. Like पापा तो नहीं देंगे. Like yeah. that is for sure. Like so I'm like what is the option? Do it by yourself. Learn the One process. One of the reasons I never went to film school. because i know my dad wouldn't pay yeah. for it and i couldn't afford to yeah like wouldn't care like i maybe my dad would but i'm not in a place to ask but you can ask him correct even even in my case maybe if him. i could have convinced him yeah, he may he have paid for it yeah he must have done something if i said nahi yeah. yeah. karna hai like this is what yeah. i want to do in my maybe yes but i never asked him i think i just couldn't and um So But I can, you, I, I can tell you. I can tell you. You did the right thing. I think theater is a better place to yeah. learn acting yeah. Yeah, uh, than acting school. I, yeah. I can tell you that from my perspective. Yeah. My perspective <laughs> is um, a. I think it's difficult to teach acting as a course. I think it's difficult. I don't know how it's done. I think okay. I can only imagining it being yeah. difficult because mm. it's a process. You know. Yeah, uh, it's not math. You know, like it's yeah. not one plus one equal yeah. to two. Yeah. You're figuring out. how the equal sign will be <laughs> right how right. long should it be right like there is so much like what is the distance between both the line like there is so much right i right, think it's right right i think yeah, and that's when 
from what i know again i haven't studied it right? i don't know how it's taught but uh, getting to work in a play you learn so much about mm-hmm. it and if the director is good if the director directing you is good there's so much you can learn uh, yeah. from how you interact in, in terms of i i was i didn't like theater when i was young i i just found it too irritating because so much work you got to go rehearse again and again and again and again and again <laughs> and the worst part uh, the thing that i didn't like uh, about theater the most of these insane creative exercises that they give you right where you do weird shit which i get the i get the import of it i get so i get funny. why it's done and well, i think it's so funny to hear from you yeah. I, i'm sure it is uh, useful right but yeah. i used to find it see i have to understand i was a very angry rebellious young guy <laughs> who'd been beaten up by his dad for most mm. of his life so i was one of those i don't give a shit i was one of the like a pomeranian you know just mm. about to bite so then you find this kid and you make him do all these random creative exercises they have to you know yell in different levels and walk around the room like you know you're a bear or some shit you know they give all these you know tough exercises and i'm like dude this is this is just what the heck this is stupid what is going on here you know and and so i didn't i didn't do theater for too long but uh, in hindsight even the little experience that i had in that one good play that i was a part of mm. and even this crazy pantomime that i was a part of i think it has helped me gauge acting and actors and that's helped me in my work yeah. as a director i feel though it was very little even that little bit um, has helped me and i can always make out the difference between actors who have come from theater and who have not okay. there's so much more nuanced you know there's so much more understanding like you i did not know you've done only one play you're a natural like when i worked with you i knew i could trust you some actors you know you can trust you yeah. know you, you know you can get them to do certain things because they have the potential other actors you i try one take and then i'm like ha huh, okay this will not happen then i figure out what i can do with him right you, know, you cannot make someone a different actor or better actor on the spot right that's why most so directors it's like a compromise that yeah that's why most directors that. are bald and i'm not cuz i the, after two takes i know what you can or cannot do right okay. as an actor and i will not force you to do something that you cannot do definitely not in that moment not right. in that second yeah. you're not equipped so many right so decisions to make right yeah right So then I say, okay, if this is what he thinks he or she is able to do, then maybe if I try this, it might work in the shot. I have to change. I change my approach, which is why I'm a less frustrated director. Yeah. You know, yeah. when I see the the shortcomings on set, whether it's the camera or the lights or the actor, I immediately shift the way I'm so cool. approaching mm-hmm. the shot. You know, uh, and that. But with you, like you're one of those actors, you and Sumit, who, Sumit, who again I know yeah. you through Sumit, right? Both of you. because of your background in theater i suppose because yeah. of the passion you guys have for acting and maybe the approach and the study you've put in i know that okay these are actors these are people who know acting where i can work with and maybe you know uh, get a good shot get a good <laughs> yeah. frame get a capture a moment you know that's what i want it's as a so director to just capture the moment you know yeah and tell the story and tell it in a way that it should be said you know not not that i want to say it that way yeah. of course is is part of the reason but <laughs> It's yeah. said a certain way, you know? I think we get used to the idea of improvisation. Like I think we're always like on our feet. That's training when, that comes from being yeah, theater, right? We're just used to it. I also like I can't say much about it because again, like I just began this journey and like I exactly don't know what the fruit of this whole thing is. I'm just really like hearing from you now or hearing Yeah, Sumit that way like I get to, I think this is a great chance for me to say it. Like I began acting because of Sumit. Like, What are you saying? Yes, I watched his play. Yeah, I'll go back to my story actually. And I said, okay, acting to karna hai, and I said, okay, film. Film is what I want to do. But then I said, I need to learn this. I can't go to a film school. How much am I going to YouTube this? Was another thing. I had to be on ground, and that that was also. It took a lot of months for me to realize what kind of an artist I am. Like. Can I sit in one place? Just one work second. on my. No, no, you, you move. You yeah. Are, you are, I think you're more comfortable there. Yeah. It's better. Cool. It's a better position. No, no, be be comfortable. Works? Sorry. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I was also figuring out like what kind of an artist I am. Like, can I sit on on a laptop for like a couple of hours and create something? Am I happy with it? Or like, do I need to be physically also active? That's where I think theater struck me. I said, if I want to learn acting, I think this is a great space. but i had no clue i i have nobody around me at that point like friends or like even relative nobody like who was into this line of work at all also like i'm a, i'm the first generation artist i guess of my family so it was just too difficult for me to like find references so i said okay i know how to design so i went and watched i just randomly 
uh, I was strolling through Instagram and I found one play which was called Nava, which was directed by Sharanya, and I absolutely love her. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I said, this is so interesting. It was a play about nine transgenders and what their stories were. So I said, cool, let me find out. And through that, I found Ramanon, and they had like really interesting work. And I finally felt like, okay, there is work that is sort of on the lines of what I'm thinking. People are working on it because I was totally unaware before that. I thought, okay, it's all going to be like this see, uh, Hindi serial kind of looking um, theater work where you maintain 45 degree and then you have a conversation and this is it. And then you have like proper. So I thought that is it. And I'm, I was not sure if I want to do that. And then I, when I found this, I said, cool. Like, I think I would want to be a part of this. A more purist approach to theater. Is that what you're talking about? As in... Um, no, I think it was just a... No, this... A this, different kind of, yeah, different genre yeah, of theater. Yeah. Right, a more... Because this I couldn't gritty, relate to. A gritty, realistic, yeah. experimental genre yeah, of theater. Yeah, I was... Right? I was... I'm... I'm always experimenting. So I mean, anything that's experimental, I would just be like, okay, cool. So then I found... I found them. So I, in that particular month, uh, I had quit another job. And I, I said, I have two months and I will figure what to do. And in those two months, I was just making calls. And I made this call. I said, listen, uh, this is the scene. I don't know anything about uh, theater, but I want to be a part of this. Now you tell me what, what my, what's the deal, right? And he said, he was so confused. <laughs> this is Sridhar, who's, who manages Ramanon. And he's just like, Mm, I, she has no clue. Uh, we have a play uh, next week. Why don't you come watch it? And then maybe we'll see where it goes Like right, after that. And I watched. I watched the play. It was called Guilt. Sumit was acting in it. And then I saw him and I was like, I found, I think, what I would like to look like, you know? And I was like, this is... Okay, I, I felt like I found a direction. And then I reached out to uh, Shvetanshu, who was the director of the play, and I said... This is where I am. I want to explore, but this is what I can do. So I can design for you. So you let me know. And then COVID hit. So I think one straight year, nothing happened. I was just watching. It was all like very internet-based kind of study, research. Uh, Stanislavski, oh, okay, hi. And then like, you know, reading up and all of that was happening. And then I think towards the end of the year, Anshu reached out and he said, I am doing this new play. And are you still up for designing it? I said, yes. And I you, went... You mean poster design or stage design? Uh, it was set. set it was design. set design. Okay. Yeah, because of architectural background and all of that. Makes sense. Said, yeah. yeah. Sorry. Okay, makes sense. Also, it was going to be my first project for a play. But I said, I think I can do something. Let me try. That was the idea. And he let me try, which I'm very grateful for. And uh, he was still auditioning. I said, can I audition for one character? And then he said, okay, fine. And then we didn't talk about it for a couple of days. They kept reading. I didn't get anything, no information. I said, okay, cool, I'll, I'll design the play. And then later he said, hey, we're having one reading. Why don't you read for us? And then I read this character. And then like he got back to me saying, this works. I think you can do the part. And that's it. I think that I had my It was... Sorry, let me repeat the name of the play. Thief. Thief. Thief, Cactus. Goat Smart. Thief, Cactus, Goat Smart. I always get yeah. the order wrong. Yeah. Thief, Cactus, Goat Smart. It was a fantastic play. I yeah, was amazed. I was, I was yeah, like, I know. only came because of Sumit. I just I wanted know. to, I felt <laughs> bad to not, I know the theater artists really appreciate people coming to their plays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, and, we Sumit, love that. and Sumit was a part of the pilot for the, the show that I'm, yes. we're working together yeah, on pitching. Yeah. I said, dude, Sumit's been so sweet. And he really came and did such a good job of that Ooh, uh, two so scenes. Nice. One scene or two scenes. The pilot, he was part of two scenes, right? The creative department scene and the scene with Ashwin. Such a fabulous job that he did. Yeah. I mean, both him and Ashwin. Ashwin is a non-actor, but such an amazing he, non-actor. He's so much fun. He's fun. He can't act. That's the best part about <laughs> yeah. him. He's a stand-up comedian. He yeah. cannot act. The so reason I fun. cast him in that role is because he cannot act to save his life. But his face is so funny. Yeah. Everything that so comes out of his funny. mouth is Too hilarious, funny. right? It's just him. <laughs> yeah. He's just born for comedy. Like his parents created him. You know? <laughs> for comedy. Not just for physical intimacy. <laughs> But for comedy, you know, that was the sole purpose of Ashwin's creation. Yeah. And him and, and, and Sumi, that scene was so amazing. And again, the other creative scene, uh, department scene, which you've seen in the pilot, where, which, where I'm in my cabin and all of that. Excellent performance. Yeah. And I said, dude, I have to support him. I must go for the play. I only came for a, like, this token presence. Right. 
no expectations because i thought at bangalore place how good it i mean i don't that's have i don't have a very yeah. high yeah. Uh, expectation of theater in bangalore which is rude but i'm just saying that's what that was my mindset coming into the play but it was no, such no there is not a lot of work happening yeah, for yeah, us yeah, to be yeah. like this is good this is bad exactly and sometimes you just have to go to one bad play and you're like oh god why yeah. do i even bother you know that happens sometimes you go see a mediocre play and you it really puts you off of theater for a while that's you know i think that was the mindset i was in but you guys you guys did a great show. i was amazed because it was beautifully written writing i mean i'm i'm i'm, I'm, I'm yeah. i appreciate writing because yeah. it's something that i it's not easy i try and try and i think i've uh, uh, to some extent i think my screenplay writing is is okay now especially in the comedy genre i think mm. i'm doing okay i think I've, i'm somewhat there pitching come yeah, on yeah yeah i mean i, I was surprised i was pleasantly surprised it worked because yeah. it's my first attempt right at long form uh, so then when i saw the writing in the play i was like dude this is this the character of the, the way it was story and and theater is a crazy thing right there's no logic like the yeah. logic the logic is off right the logic is always twisted for me i because of no film background and no education in film no i i learned by watching films okay just i just learned by watching yeah. films all my life uh and that's how i've learned my narrative style and all of that and theater breaks all those rules right it's <laughs> yeah. just bizarre shit right and sometimes bizarre, uh, i'll open another one for you sometimes bizarre shit doesn't work if done badly but when done the right way with the right intent experience yeah. and i suppose intellectual stimulus it can be such a like bizarre experience it's magic. you know yeah magic i just feel so <laughs> slightly not so manly That's saying it but yeah but yeah it's like that it's 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 an interesting experience you're like whoa this is you know like i'm not a very sophisticated guy i don't have deep artistic uh what can i say nuances mm. unfortunately from where i come from it's not very evolved but now with time with age i've learned to appreciate that okay there is certain class in something right and something yeah. is it's missing you just you know intuitively know it even though i'm not educated my brain doesn't process the information the way it should but i get it okay this is cool you know there's merit yeah i've thankfully now with experience come to recognize craft <laughs> you know i'm like yeah. hey this is this is done right and you know that play was done right the casting was perfect all of you acted really well and your your performance was it was on point you know everybody was on point and yeah. i think you, you tried doing whatever you were you were supposed to do you yeah. know and it came together yeah. it was i just thought it was a little too short though like dude it's over yeah. i wish it could be a little bit longer you know some plays are like dude okay it's good but can we like yeah. be done with it right. you know we should have been yeah. done 15 minutes ago this was a crisp one. yeah this this yeah. one i thought uh, maybe it was even if it dragged for 15 minutes more yeah you know? it should have been fun sorry yeah it was one of those did i open your oh should yeah, i yeah. sorry no, i, no, I okay. began I, to open I, I, <laughs> and i got lost in my hand movements yeah. sorry I mean, thankfully, like somehow, I think the circles that I've chosen for myself to be a part of, has somehow been very interesting work. Like it's somehow like I've ended up being around interesting work, which I'm very grateful for. I think you're also lucky that your first play was such a good yeah, one. Yeah, right? such like, a good one. It's a very good play. Yeah. Not all plays I can assure you from yeah. the little that I've experienced. Not all yeah, plays yeah. are equally good, right? It requires the right. Could script. that easily been like a whatever play? Or I mean, I'm not saying. I must have And it's an original he wrote I mean the director yeah, yeah. Sudhanshu yeah. right Shwetanshu he Sh- wrote Sorry Shwetanshu yes. Shwetanshu he wrote it and he did a great job of directing it as well Yeah uh, what's maybe it's not a question for you to answer but what's his motivation like other financial benefits of doing theater right now do you make any money at all even like the least minimum wage do you guys uh, No nothing I would say nothing so far uh, of course thief characters I was paid for the shows which was i think a big deal for me uh I was paid for design which was a big deal. i was also doing set i was also doing uh i also had to make hand make those uh, furniture or like the other things that were there on the set the cactus etc so all of that was thankfully paid for because that way dremonon in itself is very i think a self sustainable model if i'm not wrong i'm not too sure about how they work but Dremonon, right? Yeah, Dremonon. That's the production company, yes. the f- theater production company yes. that you. Yes. So Anshu and Sharanya and Sridhar run it, and and Sridhar is one, the one of the Shridhar, actors, right? Sridhar is one. Uh, he is the manager. 
No, but was he wasn't he one of the characters in no, your No, no, he was not. Okay, he was he not. doesn't act. Oh, he doesn't act. Okay. Okay. Or maybe he does. I don't know. So Sridhar manages, uh, and, Shwetanshu directs and, and writes. And Sharanya as well directs and directs writes. Directs and writes. Okay. She so, has very interesting work in Kannada and like she's exploring. So she does more regional uh, Yes. Oh, yeah, okay. So she does regional theater and Shwetanshu does the English theater. Yes. English bit of it. His is English and Hindi both. And okay. it's more contemporary. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's quite They have different kinds of work but they all run it together. and it's it's very beautiful i think to watch them work and learn from them yeah so money wise uh, no so the thing is like i've been like i think maybe because i was you know working scenario like you know you do this much work you get paid monthly this is your pf this is your medical insurance you have certain things that you do for the service that you're doing for a company i was used to that idea and i think when i'm choosing theater i'm like why shouldn't it exist and why are we i'm sure there are a lot of people working towards it and i i want to actively work towards i think i know uh, the first people that i know that mm. figured this out and did very good uh, did a great job and i think they're still doing a good job but i don't know because i've not really kept track evam in chennai right they are i think they're a good model okay now it's debatable about the the quality of their shows or the or, or the or the if Mm. uh what do i call it the nuance of their craft okay it's debatable you know are, are they are they really uh, are their plays really cutting edge as in are they really pushing the envelope as far as mm. theater art forms concerned i don't know okay i but they have uh, made it at least long for the longest time that i observed they made it a commercially viable model wow okay. i don't think they were making pot loads of money i don't like they become millionaires or whatever but i think i think there was the some money i think there was some money to make millions like it's never t- i don't think so it but i think there make... was some money i think there, yeah. w- there was some to financial motivation like, yeah. yeah i think there was if i'm not wrong i think and honestly if you just figure that out i feel like you can stay me, in it for longer i'm going to ask like. you as i know it's not fair you, uh, how many plays have you been a, now you've been a part of two plays right two active plays yeah. and uh, two non active plays i think which are on pause right now so okay right i know it's a very short experience that's a very short experience very that's short why i'm experience. saying like most of my answers to some things or my perspectives to it would be very limited to that experience right uh, whereas like let's say you're, you're talking to sumit he'll give you like a he'll give you like a mumbai perspective he'll give you like a bangalore perspective he'll give you like a pune perspective there's so much more to take from and give back but I'm also like guys like I think we need to step up. I feel like I don't know maybe it's me. I don't know or maybe it's the city. There is laziness and I don't think so. But don't you think somewhere not. the quality of plays has also impacted people's perception to it. Like today do plays worked 30 years ago because apart from cinema it was the only other place where you went and sat and you had a performance you know it was an entertainment among mm. uh, a set of very few very entertainment nice. opportunities right yeah. today i just yeah. open my phone and i can be lost for hours just staring at some social media post if that's my thing or i can just download one game from an app store and mm. be it be something as silly as pull the pin or some nonsense like that yeah. okay but engages so your you your question would be why theater like, like if that? i now movie it makes sense i'm going there because there's some explosions on screen and there's sound and there's ac and i'm sitting there and it's a spectacle and for 2 hours i'm like but even movies as we have more and more content around us the phenomenon of people going to theaters is changing it's not what it used to be people it will be there was a time when we were kids um even when you were a kid right when theaters people went to theaters on special days because they had to see the big release that's already died that's died right it's already sure. died because people can see the same stuff one week later on their TVs in the comfort of their homes right and that's the and now cinemas also being uh, attacked by the gaming industry because they are able to create worlds that don't even exist where you are an actor in yeah. the play <laughs> of things right yeah. now cinema is competing with that that itself is a giant struggle in this scenario why should i watch a play don't try to uh, i'm not looking for right answer i'm just saying because uh, i'm trying to solve this myself because when i think about theater i ask myself do we need theater a part of me says yes you need theater because how else will actors get trained right how else uh how can you let the theatric the art form of theater die right but a part of me is saying why not maybe it's outdated maybe the time for theater is done the every art form has a time and a place or maybe i'm wrong but these are my thoughts no it's so valid because i'm checking it's so i'm valid, thinking right yeah 
I'm thinking, why should a person go watch a play today? I think the only reason would be is if you are able to give him like your maybe cactus goat smart thief mm. sorry cactus thief mm. <laughs> goat smart thief yeah. like it it was an experience for me right like, it was an experience so it was worth the effort mm. now unless every play out there that I that people put out for other people is of a certain standard I think it's going to be very hard to draw people back into theatre because there were time when Bangalore also had its theatre scene. The heyday of theatre scene was before I think technology came in and and I think yeah. COVID has just plummeted that even further. Mm. But there was a time where theatre was a very active, you know, phenomena even in 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 a It city is. like Bangalore. I wow. think today the choices and I think the options that are presented before mm. a person make him wonder: Should I wait through should traffic? I really should I really yeah. wait through traffic both ways uh, and spend some money? and do something for what you know is that one of the things that's you know impeding in the growth of or survival of theater in the city right i hope the only way to solve that is like more people do theater uh for different reasons of course so there are more stories out there and there are more perspectives of theater or or aesthetics of theater or like styles of theater to explore like i think i watched a play that was done by let's say people my age they were 24 25 the director and the writer of the play was 24 25 23 the actor was 22 like you know below 25 and they had such a different perspective about it and i enjoyed it so much i could relate to it so much more and so i think the only way is to do more theater <laughs> but now how to do more theater is that's what right i think theater lacks certain factors because we're so lost in creating we forget the practicality of like how to market it or like i'll tell you something very uh, uh random okay because i have i've never had i've never been a part of theater i told you right i've part mm-hmm. of three or four productions of which only two were worthwhile experience not the two were rubbish but i've always um, over time not at that time as i grew older i respected the the institution called theater you know as a director i was able to appreciate what uh, what it gives you i think as gives, an artist right? what it yeah. gives the artists who are who are a part of it right you know that yeah. that is that, that is immense right that and the fact that there is so much passion involved in theater yeah like film is a different ball game man it's an animal okay it's a wild yeah. animal it is the world you understand film making is it's the real world it's the real deal okay it's it's a it's it's a, it's it's an ocean and it's rugged and it's rough and it's tough you know and it's real there's yeah. nothing arty about it it's about the money okay it's that's where it begins and of course there is different spectrums to it and there is the whole you know uh, yeah. the side to filmmaking that you know is more you know uh, artistic but it's a very small niche most of filmmaking is all about the money for everybody involved right yeah. <laughs> but theater is the nucleus of theater is passion passion for the craft right it is it is uh, a lot about the craft I and therefore i've respected it but i feel that people There's who are so in theater there's so much work to do i think definitely don't know how to run the theater industry mm-hmm. they don't know i think they don't work with each other i think they don't know how to make it uh, how to reach out to people i don't think they know how to market their plays i don't know how i don't yeah. think i don't th- i don't think they know how to um create the communication that should It's go out to tell for- people Yeah, that's out there, show. and there is something yeah. interesting for you to watch. I think yeah. that that's the seed of like, see, Absolutely. because more people watch it, the more you experience it, then you understand why you go watch exactly. it. Exactly. Like, like right. unless it's it's so hard, I think, for me to like, or for even you to say that, why should one watch a theater play? Like, you have to. It's something to experience. Correct. That's why you have to watch. Correct. You don't watch, I think, a play. You experience a play, right. and there is a difference. That's I think that's the basic difference between a film and. No, you also experience the film. But, but I think I know what you're it's, saying. It's it's, it's a, a more way. it's it's all it, live, and that's why things like live painting or things like games or whatever sports for some reason like you can always say that okay, play cricket, record it, and nobody comes to the stadium ever. I mean things like that. It can happen, but I think the experience of hearing something or watching something live as it when it's happening and it's only for that one second and it's never going to repeat again that one moment is never and the fact that you can't pause or rewind nothing nothing is in your you control you can't choose it at a time of your you know convenience yeah. and you you it's just that one second that you're even the actors are living for even the audience is living and everybody is breathing that one second i think that's why people watch theater uh, for the people who watch it or maybe i but 
yes there is so much work to do honestly i was coming back to what i was telling you about i definitely said okay acting to karna hai then i said okay now i've gotten this role i will learn act so i decided theater is my school it's like going to school but job to film mein karna hai like this was this is still the idea in my head i may be completely wrong about how i'm going about Not this really, you don't have to be i have no clue actually i have no analysis of um Uh, what my steps are and they're not very calculative at this point uh, but i said okay i am going to go to school this is going to be my school like i'm going to just learn through theater what it means to be an actor what is it what is it about this craft and when finally i have to do a job like you know when you graduate and you go do a job it's going to be in films it's so far my thought but now that i'm getting involved i'm realizing then i'm always thinking about okay somebody else is going to figure this out but i'm like okay i think i should also contribute to figuring this whole theater industry into being more viable i think i'm not saying make millions but i'm saying make enough Just, i think i stay. think i think there should be enough money for the artist to survive yeah to just survive, survive. i think that should be even... i think it should be a bare minimum requirement yeah, right yeah yeah um, like if somebody who's working in a film can afford a 2 bhk in bangalore in indranagar i am hoping that like a theater artist reaches that point that can pay his or her own rent at least 1 bhk if not 1 bhk at least 1 bhk like yeah. just to a studio apartment yeah studio like, just apartment just a small thing and like i'm i'm hoping that if yeah. we can achieve Then more the people problem will is it. that the creative people in theater are um, also diverse, right? They also do like other things, uh, like me. Like I also do. I also shoot for ads. I also do films because it's not because oh I want money there because that's also something I want to do. Yeah. But yeah. with full time theater makers, I think if they can like really, I don't know, make some magic happen. I, th- I think I think it has to be about a, a the quality of plays has to be consistent. Yeah. And the people that make the plays that put the plays together should uh, be consistent. Maybe collaborate as well. with people that can that can help market their product. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I think it's also a problem because uh, maybe I'm not sure. I'm not not that I've tried. I've, I've had these ideas of collaborating with theater theater people and theater artists just to help them out. because right. i feel like at some level i figured out some basic codes for survival which is what i use in my life uh, but i'm 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 scared because i've also heard that theater people if director theater director are erratic and very emotional and you know <laughs> they can be fairly pompous and arrogant and you know to not like like i understand i don't like criticism either but as a as a commercial filmmaker you get it once in a while and it's part but i believe theater actors and not theater directors especially take Uh, strongly to criticism and you know uh, un- necessarily open to ideas that's what i've heard i could be wrong but but i can imagine it being true because anywhere there's a lot of uh, i don't think i can comment on that you know i, just, I think it could be true or false yes equally i think it yeah, could be true yeah. or false but but clearly they're not doing a good enough job which is why people are not excited about theater in bangalore and people are not no one talks about how often do you or your friends not not you uh not just not your immediate friends or let's say your friends friends how often today do, do they talk about theater have have they ever has going to the theater ever been one of five options in their lives <laughs> yeah, in the no. top five it wasn't mine either like it's Correct. only Even because i chose I'm telling now you, i'm telling yeah. you i'm surprised that at least your generation still has a few theater actors because i'm surprised so i don't think people your age are choosing in i don't think theater plays a part of their lives at all it's not a yeah. part of their mental radar right. you know It's not even like if you ask them ten things you'd like to do this weekend. I don't know if theater would we'll be that top ten. Like paragliding, which is probably one city away, they might think about, you know, or saying going yeah, to Kurg the, or seeing a tiger or yeah. some stuff like that. I right? don't you know, rave or something, right? Ten things they had to because name. Because it's not popping up enough yeah. on their social media, like correct. enough on correct. the correct. things that they are consuming. Correct. Yeah, there are yeah. a lot of factors. Yeah, yeah. 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 theater industry yeah correct correct you know so i think i think it's important for the people who are in theater today to figure a way out to get people drawn to theater one more time yeah. you know and and i think it's uh, to be um, honest like this is exactly the same question i'm trying to answer also like i'm so underconfident because i'm like 
dude, I've not seen enough. I've not done enough. I've not worked with enough directors. What is my take? But besides all this, I'm like, I know what it means to do a marketing job. Like I know what it means to sell your designs because that's something that I did. And we don't necessarily sell designs, but there is a certain, uh, there is pitching involved. <laughs> <laughs> Even with the design, right? I mean, I'm like, so much is happening to sell one entity in those industries. And here it's such a big gift. And I think there are not enough supporting factors. Yeah. Like, how do you get that? So many questions, to be honest, like genuinely so many questions. Sumit and I talk a lot about it. And he's he has really interesting plans for himself uh, and for the theater world. Uh, but apart from like getting a space, writing your plays, I think, there there is a step up and if if bangalore can crack that it would be amazing yeah uh, I, think, I think it would be interesting because bangalore has, uh, has such an interesting yeah, mix of people exactly. and i think it has uh, more people that uh, are native english speakers than most other cities yeah, in india so you can you know actually you can pick up any language and do a play correct the last play that i worked on was called uh, kudrat and it was the play was based in fraser town and we were all talking everything like I would randomly say one line. I'm down. sorry, I missed it. I will come for the next performance. Yes, yes. it's on I Jan missed it 12th. Because you had a call. Yeah, yeah. It's on Jan 12th. Yes. Okay, okay. Rangashankara, 7:30 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> nice plug-in. I hope at least for your sake. Yeah. At least how many people watch this? You know, at least for your sake. Uh, yeah. So it's interesting. I find it interesting that there are, st- despite the, um, what can I say, uh, fairly low patronage that theatre has in Bangalore today. There are still theatre yeah. companies, there are still actors and directors who are uh, trying to, you know, uh, create quality uh, productions and put them out there. And yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah and I think as the, and that's where I want to come in, uh, not for theatre, mm. but I'd like to come in as a producer and director and help the entertainment, the film entertainment industry in Bangalore grow because I think there's so much potential in terms of faces, in terms of talent. Uh, because if that base grows, it mm. also, not that it's my aim, but I'm thinking as that base grows, as more and more entertainment uh, productions, film productions happen in Bangalore, of Bangalore, you know, uh, it'll give uh, actors an auxiliary income. Right today, actors only <laughs> yeah, actors only be models at best, you know, and, and modeling is tough, okay, because there are so many criteria, like for girls especially, yeah. right? Today is changing, thankfully, but mostly we just no, want. Still, I do feel like mostly we want fair North Indian looking girls for most of the products. Yeah. That's what most of the clients want I because they want a pan India feel. It's changed. It's trust me, it's much better today than it was yeah, uh, twenty years agree, ago, but I and it is changing. Uh, um, but yeah, there's some distance to go. Um, but again, that only relates to advertising. If you look at the content industry if you look at uh, web shows and movies they've yeah. moved away a lot yes. from the stereotype so of much. that yes. fair bubbly you know idiot girl you know whose only job is to look good door, and you uh, know next door girl. Uh, uh, the next door no but they're always stupid you know what i'm saying most yeah. if you look at most of the leading ladies in, in film right I th- and i think that way it's good that you are planning to like you're working towards being a better actor and not just being an actor because you uh, yeah. like in your case you don't look stupid enough you are not stupid uh, you you seem to be intelligent <laughs> and if you look at most girls young pretty fair skinned girls who play uh, the leading lady roles they usually dumb parts they're really stupid roles where the presence is yeah. purely for looks and glamour and sex appeal you know and it might seem rude of me to say this, but the fact is that most of those actors are also stupid. Yeah. They're stupid. And I say this of most actors, uh, including models and including actors, even in theatre. Eventually, over time, they become so unidimensional, right? Uh, they become stupid as from the perspective of life. You know what I'm saying? I think it's important for actors to be intelligent. And I think the best actors, not necessarily the most commercially successful, I'm talking about the best actors... Uh, are intelligent people yeah. you know, the smart people but I do feel like it's, it is like at least with the people that I am working right now with it is changing Like I, I think theatre is better that yeah. way because it gives you a grounding it gives like you somewhat am, of informal education yeah. in acting right? I am having so many conversations about so many things that are it's not just I think uh, perspectives but the intellectually satisfying conversations with your co-actors I think has been great 
maybe on a uh, but on i think i'm catching i'm telling you that's... what do you guys do on set you talk about acting and roles and performances yeah. that's all you guys do all the time right i'm saying it's detrimental in the long run uh, mm. the long run mm. uh, because uh, that becomes your world okay at 25 that's your world at 30 it's still your world at 35 you have no idea what the real world is all your world is all the characters you play and it's a make believe world that doesn't exist anywhere except on the stage and how long do you spend on the stage in your life in a in a month in a year right where for the time you're in the real world right but you're totally disconnected so it's important for actors i think yeah you know to be connected to the world and be a part of it and not just you know uh live in a dream you know <laughs> so hard to do you know what i'm saying <laughs> it's hard not to do it but it's smart to not do it <laughs> you know you got to be you, because then you have you don't get desperate i've seen actors get desperate you know and i feel bad you know and i feel bad that i'm feeling bad you know for these people like who am i to be <laughs> feeling bad cycle, you know right? for for someone yeah. It's not like I'm rich and I'm flourishing and I've you know cracked the code and I you know I'm sitting on my millions and I'm you know like partying in Ibiza. So I am no one to really be condescending. But at least for the most part, at least today, I'm talking about today, uh, I have uh, more control over my life right. than I did when I was not as smart as I am today. You know, mm. uh, I have a little more influence on what's going to happen to me because I have my revenue streams. I have my place in the world. I have my understanding of. the way society yeah. functions you know and these are things that have happened after a lot of thinking and hard knocks and solitude and joblessness and figuring out and facing up to the fact that dreaming doesn't help you know you got to figure out the code and i think a lot of actors uh, spend most of their time complaining about the fact that they don't have they don't get enough roles or they don't get enough work right uh, and i can understand the feeling I, i'm sure i'm not a full time i thankfully i chose never to be a full time actor or even acting as an ambition at a very young age i just chopped it off um but i get it must be frustrating but i think it's important that instead of complaining actors take more control of their lives you know figure out how they can a sustain themselves first right yeah and uh, also realize that you chose this it's your choice you, you know i have the authentic expression it's a very interesting expression you made your bed now lie in it you know what i'm saying every actor i feel wants to be a shahrukh khan you know wants to be a salman khan wants to be you know rich <laughs> and you know live stand in a building and wave to people you know and come on billboards and be famous i i feel like somewhere deep inside that's what every actor wants uh and i think this because i think when i was very young i'm sure even i wanted the same thing you know, mm-hmm. to be famous to be powerful to be influential yeah, to have money that's what you're fed into and that's what you're looking at and yeah. that's what you'll do i think about. it's important that But after you experience that for a 6 months for one year just get over it and realize that it's bullshit you know what i'm saying <laughs> yes you have to be economically viable which everybody can do right but fame is pathetic it's horrible and it doesn't do anyone any good Uh, from my uh, not experience my observation mm. uh, money is great and i think anyone can make money if you uh, like in anything else train yourself how to make money mm. you know but you got to train yourself and being an actor is not an excuse now being a director is no excuse to yeah. i don't know like i know I, i used to be like that i don't know much about money i never had any money <laughs> because i don't know anything about money mm-hmm. now, now i have more money than i had before because i know something i've taken the effort yeah to figure out money and the world runs on money not on if you world yeah maybe your ambitions are fueled by dreams right but the world is fueled by money and you've got to have a sure. you got to figure a way out to make sure you're economically stable and i think that's something actors should pay attention to especially when they're young yeah. you know because yeah. uh then you have like actually prabhanjan who worked with us mm-hmm. as shriram and who was also on the podcast he said something interesting which i never thought about he said uh, he used to do voice overs and all that mm-hmm. but he never went into it full time and he was always doing his other things i said yeah that's because there's not enough of a market in bangalore mm-hmm. he said yeah but also because it is something i like to do so i didn't want to do it for money i didn't want money the reason i didn't want money to be the reason why i did it because i liked it so much and while it seemed odd for a second it made sense He's saying It because now sense. if I don't like yeah. what I'm doing, if I don't like the part I'm given, I can just walk out because I don't need the money. I'm doing it for the reason that I like, and the money is just you know an added bonus, you know. Yeah. And because I have money that I'm making otherwise. Right. Yeah. And when he, I really thought about it. That's pretty cool, and I think that's how every artist, not just actors, but mainly actors, but also sure. artists, should approach it till you make so much money that till you've achieved so much success that 
your main income is acting till you get there you got to not if you don't want to be a struggler you don't want to be struggling to make ends meet you got to walk the extra yard and that experience of doing something else will only make you a better person a smarter person uh and eventually a better actor yes. because you are yes. in the world and of it yeah. you know what i'm saying you're not just living in shakespeare land you know you're also living in you know the moment you know <laughs> yeah. wherever the heck you are you know so yeah. i think that's important for uh actors to understand because i i feel the frustration but it's not going to help frustration doesn't help you got you got to figure it out uh i think you have to uh um uh take uh you got to accept that you made a choice and every choice has consequences and i think what's also important i know i'm philosophizing must be the beer <laughs> uh it's also important to understand that the pain is the part of the process of course you know yes. uh, it really took me very long time to realize that yeah. of course i think you that's know? something i've slowly i'm in terms with i think also like what you what you were speaking about i think people now at least i the 20s right i mean we are exposed to so many options i don't think anybody no more is just an actor just a writer just, i'm sure they have three four things going on like they should i mean you're a graphic designer and you're also going to i i i was at like i was in murgesh palya and i was going to like i was going home or something and i said okay let me stop for momos and i stopped like for momos and it was a new guy and he looked like one of us and stuff like so i was like hey this is interesting let me stop by and i had the momos there and i said okay then we started talking and then you know, he was like where are you from and etc i said yeah i live around and then i said what do you do is this your full time thing and then he's like no this is actually my fiance's idea and like his fiance was there too and like, what do you guys do and he's like i'm a graphic designer <laughs> and I was like, guys yes i mean we have so much to do yeah like, yeah yeah uh, absolutely you i don't think people are satisfied anymore to just do one thing unless of course you make it i think that's what the phrase is um i think you make it the make it is when there is a uh, uh, abundance of uh, options yes you know yes. and i mostly yeah. tied with money mostly it's, it's not always yeah. but 90% but of the time it's a financial yes. thing yeah it know? is it frees you up or it gives you the options yeah. you know uh so i've said this to a few actors but they always think i'm joking why can't you be ola or uber driver you know what i'm yeah. saying yeah of course it'll definitely give you enough money to survive okay and whenever you have an audition or thing to do you just don't switch on the damn ola or uber meter yeah. you know what i'm saying it gives you enough money to survive okay only thing is you're a driver when you're not an actor which is in one way embarrassing but another way it's cool imagine so being able to cool. look back you know and say and, i used to drive a cab and so that is like your uh, um, observational study right like because then you're on like a uh, every guy i'm yeah. telling you i've thought of doing this just for some you know just to i get ideas of stories and stuff mm-hmm. where i just become a driver and just listen to the conversations people have on the mobile phones to other people you know what i'm saying so interesting you for sure so much, i would love you get so many ideas you I understand people right i wanted to work right? at a cafe for this yeah I'm yeah saying, john I'm ham right that really handsome good looking guy who come who became famous through mad men mm. right which is the smarter version yeah. of what we're doing <laughs> which is the like the other end of the spectrum yeah. the sophisticated good looking smart version right that guy was a waiter till he was discovered uh, on the movie that he did before mad men happened he any yes, waited table 6 years 6 years that guy is good looking and is talented and is brutally handsome as him i hate him i hate guys like them i hate they're just good looking <laughs> they're handsome they're brutally handsome he's one of those brutally handsome bastards you know the kinds that i wish did not exist uh, but they do you know uh, but he that guy waited tables for 6 years 6 years before he got his first big lead in a movie and then the show happened show also he auditioned uh and it's almost like when he walked in and his his voice and his looks and his gaze and it's like when he read that part it's like almost like he was created for that part right. and that he was on the spot hired for this role so that cool. eventually made him famous you know um but yeah he had to wait tables yeah uh but then the problem is there are many john hams waiting many tables that will never become john hams and that's also a reality you have to accept um but the uh 
the thing should be to not die poor and broke or be 40 45 year old uh, who's frustrated uh, and full of remorse and uh, and and negativity mm. i think that should be every actor's uh, uh, desire to not be that person to be, you know? be. be middle aged and resentful of the life you've led that's a horrible place to find yourself in and i don't think anybody has to find yourself in a first of all this is my first belief okay if you are truly a good enough actor you will find the parts that will help you sustain yourself okay this is not always true but that's my observation that most of the time 9 times out of 10 if you're really good enough if you gen- and especially today in this year of technology and explosion of content today we are so lucky you and i are alive and not too old you are very young and i'm not too old in 2021 almost 2022 because the options the entertainment the requirement for content so much. is multifold yeah. right today if you have the craft then the commercial need will find you but the question is are you good enough there are so many people that do the shit that you want to do right the why the fuck and should anyone think- pay you and not them right and the answer is because you are better than them because you have something that they don't have because right. you have taken the time and the effort to become one notch better than all those other people that want the same shit that you want but it comes to you because you deserve it sounds so nice you yeah? know but also i think it's no more about being good everybody is good everybody yeah. is fucking Absolutely. really yeah. bloody yeah. good not true but i get what you're saying but but like for like one role i'm sure like you will find you'll be surprised yeah you'll be surprised Without i mean i meet uh, i i meet a lot of actors when i audition for these commercials that i do right most people can't even act most people they want to be actors and some of them look good i mean a lot of them look good which is why they think they can act very bad uh very few actors that when i work with them like, hey this person has the potential or has worked on the craft or you know has uh, not just desire but also talent mm. and talent is just wanting something so much that you get good at it so a lot, lot of lot of actors are very lazy the terrible actors especially in the modeling all actors are lazy to be honest yeah i think that's a big problem it's like it's well like not really at least you i don't know how lazy you think you are I'm you're at lazy. a you're you're at a position where let's say i had a character and i and i gave it to you i know that you'll at least score 5 on 10 however bad okay. or good a day you're having i can expect at least 5 on 10 if not 8 or 9 minimum guarantee 5 on 10 6 on 10 you'll give me mm. you worked at least to that point now there are a lot of people who want to be actors who not even work to that point where on any given day you can deliver 5 or 6 as a director i've worked to a point i think in life where i didn't know anything once upon a time and i don't know i don't even know how i became a director <laughs> i don't even know when i look back it's a bizarre story but i am today and i'm at a that point where that should be a podcast How did Sandeep become a filmmaker? It's crazy. It was it's so stupid and it's crazy, illogical. I just became one day. One day I said, "Hmm, I'm going to direct," and I just it's started like directing theater. ads. You know, and I just I think I was just such a good convincer or something. I just mm-hmm. convinced people to give me ads to direct, and I learned directing through by directing ads that people are paying me to direct <laughs> for them. You know, and it was great. It was a great journey. But today, I've come to a point where I've put the work. uh into the craft right and on any given day no matter how bad i'm feeling no matter how horrible my personal life is no matter how dire the circumstances i will give you 5 on 10 minimum minimum guarantee 5 on 10 mil jayega if it's a really great day you might get 8 if you're very lucky you might even get a 9 you know what i'm yeah. saying you know but my <laughs> average i think my average i think is 7.5 i think average is 7.5 i think there are days when i touch 8 regularly and there are some days where i'm like oh yeah today was a 9 <laughs> you know you you have those days yeah. but no matter how bad the situation unless i'm hospitalized or like you know passed out because of fever or something you're going to get a 5 on 10 mm. right that's the belief i have from the hard work i've put into the craft if you're an actor you should be able to uh what can i say claim the same you know any given day no matter how bad you're feeling or whatever is happening basic mil jayega no a lot of people can't they're very bad and they frustrated i'm worried and when they they're complaining to me they're not getting work i just feel like slapping them I'm like firstly you don't deserve work you're not there yet you know and don't worry about actors are always worried about the reward that you know they're not getting the money and they're not getting the this and they're not getting the this and they're not getting the that <laughs> shit you know? reward is another episode i think i think yeah. the perspective on reward and what it means is yeah it i think i've been trying to understand honestly i i have no answers to this but to myself also but like i have so many conversations to myself with myself that am i doing this for a reward like is that what it is and what what does it mean 
to not have a reward and how frustrating it is like even if you put out content let's say on any social media instagram or something so much questioning happens already before you create before even you create anything you're already thinking about the reward I, it's it's difficult yeah no it's it's i think it's it's, all, it's always been difficult especially with advent of social media i think it's a very tricky thing for young people today yeah, because social media that whole uh, love for likes is a very addictive thing is totally misleading because i ask sometimes i ask young girls you know who are doing this putting on content i'm like who do you think is liking your content really really who do you think you think the most evolved sophisticated you know uh, well read you know well meaning people are liking your content it's some honey boy in uttar pradesh who's clicking your pictures of you pouting you know towards the stars like i think a lot of girls especially girls guys also but i think mainly girls uh give too much importance to their persona on social media right um i don't know if it's a healthy thing i think it's an unhealthy obsession and i and most more often than not 9 times out of 10 also like yaar kitna hi dekhoge correct like, correct ab yeah ab to like yeah, yeah. you know like let's okay how much am i going to see your face absolutely. like boy absolutely. or girl like yeah. anybody yeah. Yeah. like even when i am like as an actor i'm like okay i need to put myself out there like i need to be but when i am questioning like how much am i going to like say that this is how i look like like in how many more angles yeah and then yeah right now i'm working on something called a film every odd day and i'm writing my own thing and i film myself and i i just put that out instead where i can i'm i'm thinking it's a way to like explore or like keep the craft Well, Going it's interesting. On. I think I think it's interesting yeah. what you're doing because a you're practicing. Okay, your 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 practice makes yeah. There perfect. is something. There's practice something happening. Perfect. Like it's not like okay, just it's just still. Like I'm still. Uh, you put a thought into it. There is an idea. There is some work good or bad. There's an idea. It. Yeah. You put work into it as a writer, and you are working on it as a performer, and you are creating it as a producer. You get the yeah. multiple roles you're playing. You know. Yeah. Uh, so I'm also editing it. You're so also I'm editing it. You're also editing it. Learning how to do it. And Most stuff. a lot of actors don't even know the craft of filmmaking, right? And I think it's important to understand. It uh, is. I think. Know? Yeah. Once I think you explore editing. Oh, I've been so excited about it because. I was so I was just like oh this is not my thing and like a very close friend of mine like he said like no learn it it's beautiful like do your first edit yeah. and see what it feels like <clears throat> and I did my first edit and I felt it so good Yeah it feels great I love editing as well it's great it's a good like feeling You finish the edit I don't know I, I'm absolutely like I'm a baby at it right now like it's just baby But it feels good and feel that thing of export and you're like yeah I yeah, made this yeah I, I cut like, this shit this and you know how yeah it looks wow like, and you can really change yeah. what you wanted to say I think while performing I don't know I've not done enough camera work for me to say this but I'm doing this so that I'm so that I get you know, better at No of course it helps I'm telling you I was an editor long before I was a director oh, you know wow. I, I I was, I was okay. editing AVs when I was in the agency I used to make all the dealer meet AVs oh, back then we used to cut footage from movies Hindi movies <laughs> foreign films and make the dealer meet no and the most abused films would be Rocky 4 where the uh, competition is the russian boxer and our brand is uh, stallone you know and then we show him practicing we show him and then on the final match he beats the you know and we'll we'll steal some bollywood song change the lyrics it's complete copyright infringement but back in the day it was allowed now you can't do it no, can't. i have at least edited <laughs> so much fun. 200 of these this. kind of avs 200 oh avs oh my god you know I and we take this. and the most abused uh, uh, tracks for these avs be final countdown okay mm. that's one of the things and i of the tiger is the other one <laughs> and we will rock you is one of those other tracks <laughs> and and we are the I champions see the sentence, please i don't know I have, but i'm saying have every to. agency put these things out yeah. and i okay. i think i would done at least 200 of these and of course i think as a director and also from the perspective of acting it teaches you because you understand the grammar of film right you understand the way the eye works and why a certain pattern of shots is better as opposed to other patterns of shots because you understand there has to be a rhythm there has to be yeah. a flow there has to be a pattern there has to be uh, an idea behind what you're trying to express there has to be a logic Yeah, there has to yeah. be an underlying theme. You know, you understand all these things as you're doing it. Like, oh, yeah. oh, 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 why is this? Because you have to. Un- you understand. Sometimes you do something bad. You're like, this is not working. Why? And then you do something. It works, and you have to an- analyze. You're like, oh, right. oh, yeah, oh, oh, yeah, oh, oh, yeah. You know, yeah. like so, I know for a fact that like I'm not like naturally talented. Or like, I'm like, I'm not naturally talented. Or 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 like, I
so scared of not knowing enough when i'm on a set i'm like i need to know at least basic i think it's important things. when you go to bombay yeah. if you ever do um the actors there are hungry and literally and figuratively because they probably want to eat in for two days because they didn't have money so they're hungry for work and hungry for what about they're very hungry and they are much and as a result they are driven again sometimes uh, they're not really approaching life the smart way but at least they're driven they're more prepared yeah. even there i find shockers even there i even find shockers here, here it's like someone pushing a wall and saying i've been doing a lot of work i'm like but you're not better as an actor <laughs> i agree you've done a lot of work but it's not like you've gotten any better no yeah. so so kya kya fayda hai tera work karne ka tu paida hua kyun like that you know i feel like i feel like so scared to talk to directors because like sir maine bahut kaam kiya hai maine i said to you're still a bad actor no oh shit like just shut up and do what i'm telling you do relax just relax and just breathe and just do what i'm telling you don't na main socha tum tumse kuch nahi bola sochne ko तो सोचा ही नहीं तो ओके मैं बोल रहा अभी सोचने का वक्त नहीं है अभी करने का वक्त है यू नो 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 इट पिसेस मी ऑफ लाइक यू रियली लाइक आई एम वन ऑफ द नाइसेस्ट डायरेक्टर्स यू लाइव वर्क विद बिकॉज़ ओनली बिकॉज़ नो ओनली बिकॉज़ आई वंस हैड एस्पिरेशंस ऑफ एक्टिंग सो आई अंडरस्टैंड द एक्टर्स साइकी सो आई रियली वर्क विद व्हाट आई हैव आई विल नेवर आस्क ऑफ यू व्हाट आई मेंटली थिंक यू कैन नॉट परफॉर्म I scan right or wrong I scan you for 10 minutes and the output this person is very bad or no Hmm, has potential. Maybe try some shots or whatever. I'll say, excellent potential. Try experimental stuff or something. You know, if I read after ten minutes, I'll check the result. Oh, ये तो गधा है. And then I will not expect the gadha to perform like a stallion. Hmm. You know. So I'm. But then when I'm telling you your limitations and helping you with your work, you say, then you oh, receive it. मैं सोच रहा हूँ. I'm like, uh. hey, <laughs> अगर तू सोच पाता है ना. <laughs> You would not be here, okay? I'll just shut up, do what I'm trying to tell you to do, and we'll be fine. Because in ad filmmaking, especially, which is what I've done mostly, time is money, dude. Yeah. You got to get to the next shot, get to the next shot. You know, uh, so there's no time for bad actors. But even in cities like Bombay, full of hungry, eager, enthusiastic actors, there are some shirkers. So people who think they're better than, much better than they are, as an actor. I think it's better to have the inferiority complex where you actually think you are worse than you are. It's better place to be, you know, than to think you're better than you are, you know. Uh, yeah. But yeah. Anyway, yeah. I hope you don't have any curfew at home. I think we've been at it for a while. Yeah. Yeah, we've been at it for a while actually, longer than you'd realize. How long have we been at it? I have it? no clue. Almost two hours. So we'll wind it up there because yes. I. But we can have a chat later. Uh, yeah, of and course. And maybe in a few months yes. discuss. uh your thoughts on life how life both the podcast <laughs> yes. how it's been after 3 months and you know like what the impact the, the impact it's had production on your life now and <laughs> fully financially stable yeah and guess what car i came in and shown mark you know key and all that i'll be like i feel bad big dude maine isko advice diya aur ye itni badi ho gayi aur main abhi bhi yahi podcast like i'm still doing the shit i look at her dude shit cool. is that a gucci bag you know stuff like that <laughs> No, no plans. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for yes. coming. I hope you had a good time. Yes. Uh, I, I had a wonderful. I hope you had fun. I hope it was fun. It's fun. a perspective. I think me and uh, the twenty-five, thirty viewers that I hopefully will have. I think got a perspective of uh, a young actors, young full-time theatre actors' life in Bangalore. I think there's a lot more we can discuss, but uh, yeah. we'll keep it yeah. short for today, and we'll catch up another time. Thank you. Hope to see you soon. <laughs>